Hello and welcome to the Tottenham America channel. Today we'll be looking at Tottenham Hotspur's 2-1 defeat to Wolverhampton Wanderers as Tottenham endured a late, late heartbreak at Molyneux thanks to two stoppage time goals. Brennan Johnson opened the scoring for Spurs early on in the third minute after Ange Postacoglu had to heavily rotate our side before Pablo Sarabia and Mario Lamina got their respective goals six minutes apart in stoppage time to get Wolves all three points on a dismal, dismal day for Tottenham Hotspur. What went wrong today? Many things went wrong. I think one of the biggest points was that so many new players had to come to the squad for suspensions and injuries since Udogi, Romero, Madison, Van de Ven all out of the first team today because of injuries or suspensions. And many of these players who are just coming in, like Davies, Dyer, uh, maybe even Hoybier, Royale, um, are not fully fit to play a whole match they are fit and they're up with fitness but they're not probably they're probably not up with match conditioning they haven't been playing as often maybe they've been playing coming on to subs and playing 30 minutes of a match or so 20 minutes of a match but they haven't played a full 90 minutes in a long time and you can see right at the end when we conceded those two goals it was pretty much a lack of awareness from our defense and how um we just switched off pretty much which is which was definitely a symptom of fatigue yeah I think um, we did the be We put out the best lineup we could have today. Um, we lost all of our players last time out. We ended the match at Chelsea with four people on. Uh, well, yeah, we ended the people uh, match at Chelsea with four of the starting lineup players on the pitch, which you just go to show you how many players we lost that day. Um, I think it was the best lineup we could have put out. I think we were screaming out for an attacking midfielder the whole game. And ultimately, that was what our problem was. We started the game with Saar, Basuma, and Hoybier. Um, Basuma and Saar are okay, but they, they're not creative midfielders, certainly. And Hoybier is as far opposite from a creative midfielder as you can get. Um, so I think we were really, really crying out for an attacking midfielder. Lo Celso definitely changed the game when he came on. I think he definitely opened this up a little bit more attacking-wise. He got us a good shot on goal. Our first shot on goal from uh, since the Johnson sh uh, goal was Lo Celso shot into the top corner, which was saved excellently by Jose Sa. So I think if we had brought him on a little bit earlier, we would have benefited from that. Um, our attackers were a bit off it, uh, except for um, Brennan Johnson. I just felt like Son and Kulisewski were a little bit like up and down today. Yeah, I think they just they just were not clicking today. Son um, really not getting near the ball as much as, probably not as much as he'd like to. And um, really, he had many chances to get a shot off, but then he just didn't look confident. Yeah. I think that describes the whole game. We were just off of it today. Yeah. We were just not on it today. And um, Basuma especially. I was shocked by how kind of lackluster he was in the first half. There was no spark. Nothing that we've seen in the previous like season. I did not see any of that in Basuma until like the 60th minute. Which was pretty shocking because today was the day that we needed him to pull out the moves and move the ball forward. But he was very, very content with hitting side passes today. Yeah, and also no Madison. So how how to really cope with that? Yeah. It was it kind of really took a toll on our team. And I think if we started Los Celso, it would have helped with that. Yeah. Especially against Wolves, who play a 5-3-2 when they're defending. Yeah, because I think a big problem with us was we would get into that third half and then we just pass back because Wolves has about 17 million people behind the ball. Right? They're blocking their goal with 17 million people because that's the way they play. And it worked today because we had no creative midfielder, so we had no way of penetrating them, um, which was a big, big problem. And then, of course, our probably the worst part of our pitch today, the most changed, um, was our defense. We lost three of the players, so Royale, Davies, and Dyer came in for Udogi, Romero, and Van de Ven, and we, I think, suffered massively back there. Yeah, Davies and Dyer, I mean, they didn't do ter they didn't do that bad in the first half. And I thought Davies was the better one, definitely. Yeah, Dyer... Davies, I think, did really well today. Davies also had more to do than Dyer, but then 75th minute and on, I think that's when it, they started really to um, get fatigued, and that's when they started performing badly. Yeah. Um, Pedro Porro, on the other hand, was very good today. He was basically taking the role of Madison, or trying to, with those creative passes. Um, it didn't really work that much, but he was trying as hard as he could. He was running up and down the pitch, and he was putting in a shift today, so he did really, really well. Uh, I think Davies, as I said, he was okay. Dyer, I think, was... Both of them switched off for the last two goals. 
Like, that ball through, someone should be on it. But they just kind of let it roll past, which I think has been a very, very common pattern since the seasons with Poch, is that they let balls roll past, um, but attackers still go for them, and that's how we concede a lot. Um, and then Royale for the last goal. I don't know what he was doing. I think he was marking... Um, he was completely switched off after that quick free kick. Yeah, he was marking Pablo Sarabia running in from the right, and he was barely jockeying him. He's got to close him down a little bit because that's why Udagi's successful, that's why um, Poro's successful, because they close down their opponents. So if Emerson closes him down, I think we get the ball back. But Emerson leaves him so much space, and we end up conceding, which is a big, big problem for us today. Yeah, um, for Ricario, I think he had pretty good distribution. Really could not do much about the two goals. Definitely couldn't do anything about Sarabia's goal. Yeah. Uh, made a made a good save in the first half, and couldn't do anything about Lamina's goal. So, I think it was mainly our defense that caused us defense and midfield that caused us problems. Yeah. But, but even but the attack, even like, the attack, but it all like built. The... I feel like all our all of our problems built off of the midfield. Yeah, and everything kind of culminated. Cool. Like it's just been a torrid, torrid week for Tottenham with the loss at Chelsea, losing like 17 million of their players, and then now the loss here. We don't fall anywhere. We stay in second, but Arsenal and Liverpool both have the chance to bypass us on points and go at least one point above us, tied um, with Man City for now. They have to play tomorrow. But I think this was a big opportunity for us to get the points while we were, you know, fractured and injured and have a chance at getting up a little bit, but did not work today. And we stay in second, zero points from Molyneux. But I think I'm just disappointed by the fact that we started off so brightly with that Johnson goal and everything fell apart. We stopped being confident. Hoybier started... Um, Hoybier was so rigid today. So stiff. He could have done so much more with the ball. He had the ball. He was just passing. We were basically passing from side to side. Switching the ball from Johnson or Son on the left-hand side. Yep. Going back into the defense. And then back to the right. Um, but how our first goal was created is because when we did that, we switched Poro, it fast. Poro made an option for Kulusevski, made yeah. an overlapping run, and he put in a quick cross, yeah. and Johnson was able to get, get on it and score. Yeah. But we were not doing that, especially on the left-hand side. Um, I feel like Johnson, John, we did not have much service on the left-hand side. Johnson was kind of cutting in. He wasn't staying on that left-hand side, which is how we scored the first goal. Um, but I think... I think Kulisevsky needs to do a little more. Get like he needs to get confident on his. Kulisevsky right foot. needs to take a shot because he's yeah. fine. His his dribbling was absolutely superb today. Like he was really really good dribbling, but he cuts in so much and instead of shooting, he just passes. When I think if he shot, I think he could test the goalkeeper. And it's it's almost like every single time the defender can read his mind, he's yeah. almost always going to cut and he has to kind of learn how to put it on his right. Okay, I we've think we've seen him. We've seen him score. We've seen him putting crosses with his right that are pretty good. Yeah. Like the goal against Sheffield United um, and other crosses. He's done it before, yeah. and he needs to build confidence in it. I think that's a good point, but also Kulusevski is so predictable that he's unpredictable. Like, you don't know when he's going to do it. You know he's going to do it. You're always on edge. So I think, like, Kulusevski is fine with his cutting in part. He needs to learn how to shoot instead of passing. I just feel like passing is not always the right option, and if he shoots with that left foot, he's got an absolute curler on that side. He could really score some goals. So I think it should, he should definitely build that into his game because he'd score a lot more. Um, but yeah, that's it for our review of Tottenham's loss to Wolves by two goals to one at Molyneux. Tottenham miss out on the chance to go first in the uh, Premier League table. Goals from Mario Lamina and Pablo Sarabia in stoppage time canceled out. Brandon Johnson's third minute opener. If you enjoyed and want to see more Spurs content, I don't know who wants to see more Spurs content right now, but if you crazy people somehow want to see more Spurs content, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Comment down below what your thoughts on this game were. And until next time, come on, you Spurs!